Hi, my name is Lisa Jane and welcome to this new video of the projector progress. I am an emotional projector 6-2. I have two defined centers. My only two defined centers are my solar plexus and my root center and they are connected through the emoting channel, the 3955. In the projector progress, I really want to share my experience with the human design experiments. I want to share what I'm going through, what is coming up for me. And I am now already two years into my experiment. So I have a lot to share with you guys and I cannot wait to share more of my knowledge with you. And if you're interested and if you want to keep up to date, make sure you subscribe. And yeah, let's get into the video now. So today, guys, I really want to talk to you about my whole experience with my emotional authority. When I started my, my experiment, when I discovered design, the first six months I was very much into the knowledge, like learning a lot of stuff and reading things about it and also following all the Instagram accounts and then every time when I saw things about me, about the projector, about the 6-2, I was like, yeah, I really recognize this. So every time I really got this like dopamine shot of, yes, that's me. But yeah, I also know that just knowledge and just knowing things means nothing until you really do something with it. And of course, this is really what human design teaches, what well, really what Ra teaches. He teaches like, he says, don't believe me, go see for yourself. And I really love this concept that he shares because this is also what Buddha from Buddhism said. Like, okay, am I really into this? Am I dedicated enough? So at the beginning of 2022, I dedicated my year to the human design experiment. And then it's just strategy and authority, right? It's just going back to the basics. It is, there's so much to dive in and that's really what the mind wants, right? It really wants to dive into all the channels and the gates and you really want to understand it all. A little bit of an open head there. <laughs> but yeah, you really want to understand it all, but it really comes down to strategy and authority. So that is what I decided for myself. Like, okay, strategy and authority, that's what it is. So as a projector, my strategy is, of course, wait for the invitation. And then my authority is an emotional authority as I have my solar plexus defined. So with those two things that I knew, okay, where do you then start? I mean, I get this question quite a lot that people ask me like, how do you start? What do you do? Well, you just begin and you just begin by being aware, being aware, having awareness is the key part, I guess, in this whole journey. For me, as my strategy as a projector is wait for the invitation. It is more time dependent. So. I don't have that sacral defined. I'm not a generator or a manifesting generator where I can immediately apply my strategy. Same goes for manifestors. It was very important for me to be aware like, okay, that whole part of wait for the invitation, I'm gonna leave that out for now. I'm just gonna focus on my authority and my authority was the emotional authority. And then, yeah, the whole, the whole knowledge thing about the emotional authority, I remember reading that all and also really not feeling any connection with it. And I was a bit like, what the fuck does it actually mean? Because it, it says, emotional authority, you make decisions based on your emotions, based on how you feel. Um, it says things like, wait for before you make the decision do not make the decision right away give yourself time and these things were a little bit fake to me right like okay i can get the idea but it was still a bit fake my number one step in this whole process of living by my authority was getting to know my emotions getting to know my way because within the emotional authority you go through your wave and I always explain it like 
you have the wave going and then when you're high in your wave and you say yes to someone that asks you something to do something you say yes I will be there or I love to and then the next day you're in your low and then you would be like oh why did I say yes to that so it's really about understanding what your wave is about and where you are in your wave and how you feel so that was my number one priority in the whole getting to know my emotions and my emotional authority and this has been such a journey <laughs> i can tell you because i noticed that i was very much out of tune with my emotions in 2020 20, 2020 when uh the whole lockdown and covid was there this was the moment I should I could say that I, I was more spiritual awakened. That was the time that I really started to become aware of a lot of things. I did an, a lot of meditation, I did a lot of mindset work, I uh, was very much focused in like the positive thinking part so that you can really create your own reality with what you think. So it was all very like, I always explain it like a very head based also with the meditation it was nearly like i was more out of out of my head more above and and not that much in my body um and then two years later so this was in 2022 i really wanted to get more in touch with my emotions and this was the time that i was spending my time in mexico in puerto escondido on the west coast of mexico and also mazunte and it was very very good to be there in that moment of time i believe i sh uh, it was meant to be that i was there because i met a lot of beautiful women with such a beautiful energies that and they showed me that they were so confident in their bodies and it was in that time that i really became more aware of my body and i went to yoga classes i went to cacao ceremonies i did aesthetic dance um and I was becoming more confident within my own body. So I've always been kind of insecure about, well, my belly, for example. And now I was in this phase where I wanted to wear just a bikini that was not high-waisted, for example. This was the time where I really actually grounded more into, into my body. And I can remember the day so so very well that it was one of the last days in, in Puerto Escondido and I went to a yoga class and the yoga class ended and it was so nice and it was uh, done and we were ready and we were sitting like this and we chanted Om and, and then yeah the class was done and I opened my eyes and I just looked at the sunset and I just started crying and for me it felt like the cherry on top that i cried i cried again since like since for years i didn't cry and that was the moment i felt i connected again it was that moment that i realized that my body is the key to my emotions being connected in my body is the key back to my emotions. That was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> but it was a good start, you know? It was also in this moment that I realized what it really meant to ground, ground down in the body. And this was also the moment that I realized within my human design experiment that my two defined centers, my definition, that is my foundation and that is of course my defined root center and my defined solar plexus so the root center is also about grounding down so all these years and especially with things that happened in my past with my parents getting a divorce me as a teenager being very stubborn put up the wall no emotions are let in um that that I realized that also the whole spiritual awakening that I had in 2020 and very much mind-based and even out there, that it was all about coming back down, 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 because that is where my definition is. That is something that I can build on and I can trust on and I can rely on. This is what human design also teaches, of course, is that your definition is the part in you you can rely on. It's reliable, it's fixed inside of you. 
So I knew, okay, that is what I need to focus on right now. This is also what I really recommend to my clients or to anyone that's listening, is that focus on your, start focusing on your definition. Do not start focusing focusing on your conditioning on, or on your open centers. That will come up. It will come up, and because it is always open, it's an it's something you it's endless. Like it's it's really endless. So it's the most important part to get to know your definition. Yeah, after that period of of, of Mexico, it just it was yeah roller coaster started. I guess. <laughs> roller coaster started and it was just really from like I said like day to day getting to know how I feel and I remember and it's still quite quite difficult for me that the the question on how do you feel today or do how do I feel today is quite a difficult question for me to answer because the mind labels an emotion with what we know so like maybe frustration or anger or being sad but what is actually the felt sense that is also something that i really have listened to and learned that it's there's a difference between asking yourself what is the felt sense at this moment in my body so maybe it's stuck maybe it tingles maybe it's 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 uh, you feel it moving it's twisting it's warm it's cold what is the felt sense in your body because if you look at it like that at the emotion something that wants to move through you then you like distance yourself from how the mind labels it this is also something that i really have discovered that we want to understand why we feel a certain way so if my mind would label it with oh i'm sad today then immediately you go into oh but why do i feel sad today uh what what has happened that makes me feel sad but this is what the wave is about you just feel those things from moment to moment day to day week to week because that is how your mechanics work that is how your energy moves through your body and really being detached from that emotion not clinging on to uh, the emotion or identifying myself with the emotion has been a whole process too and I'm still in it you know uh, I still can get moments where I really want to analyze like oh why am I feeling like this and especially if my wave my low is taking a very long time i have had periods where well easily three weeks i can be in a very moody moody place and and then it can really frustrate me in a way because i also know how i'm impacting my my the people around me and and that's that's difficult sometimes for me so yeah it's it's not it's not easy to say it's just let it be there but yeah it is it can be there without without any reason okay a couple of months passed by i was getting better in in crying for example and i still feel that crying isn't always the way that i would like to release it's just a way to release I was noticing that I was softening, you know? Then there was this other moment that I remember really well, and that was around October 2022. I was having a conversation with my friend about emotions and about my solar plexus. We were talking about human design, and then I told her uh, about touch being my strongest sense, and that I do not always feel it like that, especially when I'm, for example, with my partner. I would have more of the tendency to feel like, don't touch me. Then we came on the conversation about the birth control pill. So this was really interesting, this whole birth control pill. Uh, because then she said to me, what if the birth control pill is numbing your strongest sense? And how she said it like that, I was like, damn, you could be right. Because also I was feeling that my emotions were kind of numb. So I've been in this period of a couple of months where I was becoming more aware of my emotions, but then still 
it was quite flat and especially because my channel, my emoting channel 3955 says that we can experience high highs and low lows, I wasn't having those high highs and low lows. So human design was telling me something that I wasn't experiencing. And then the birth control pill came up as a conversation. And that was the moment that I quickly decided to stop with the birth control pill. It was kind of scary because I really, well, like I say, I don't want to get pregnant right now. Um, but yeah, for me, living my design was at that moment so strong there that I decided to stop with the birth control pill. I can tell you <laughs> it's been even more of a roller coaster since then because it's crazy to really feel now like whoa is this who i truly am because yes i am experiencing these high highs and low lows more and much more intense and and there have been periods that i have been thinking like maybe i should go back on the pill again because it is quite intense <laughs> That's the beautiful thing, I think, of human design, that human design is there to show me that this is correct for me, that that is okay. It's okay to go in these very dark moments and feeling like very, yeah, dark and moody and that the moodiness is really a state of where also a lot of strength of me plays in. It's been nearly a year now, well, yeah, nearly a year since I'm not on the pill anymore. So that's that's good. That's really good. And I'm happy. I'm happy to not be on the pill. But yeah, it has helped me in getting to know my emotions better. So I'm looking now, I've been talking quite a while. And the only thing that I've been talking about is the whole journey of getting to know my emotions. And of course, within these moments, there have been decisions made that I could really tune in with my emotional authority. But the beginning is to getting to know this wave and understanding what my more neutral state is. Because what I've also noticed is that the neutral state isn't my high. My high isn't there to aim for all the time. Now, when I'm in my high, I love it, but it's also kind of crazy sometimes, but it gives me the contrast of life. It gives me a certain contrast that when I'm in the high, I'm loving life and I can really feel this, mm, this feeling inside of me that I just love. But then it's the, the thing that you have to understand that that is not the neutral state and that, it, that it's something that I do not have to aim for all the time or to attach myself to. I know that when it's there, I'm enjoying it. And I also know now that it will go, that it will like, yeah, become lower again. And when the low is there, also embracing the low. And like I said, just now, I can still feel those moments of frustration or wanting to understand the low, but I have some hacks or hacks <laughs> that do help me. What I have noticed in my low is my mind gets really, really loud. And then it's getting back to my foundation. It's getting back to my defined root and my defined solar plexus, which means going into the body. That also means like going outside for a walk, doing some yoga, go to the gym or whatever, just move my body is the most important thing for me in the moment that I am in a low. This is what an emotion is, right? It's energy in motion. I really understand now that my emotion just needs motion. And this is also what's happening, of course, with the roots, giving the pressure to the emotion. So movement is the best way for me to lighten it. But yeah, it still can happen that it's not then gone and I'm not in my high then after I move. No, I'm just more, more neutral and, and quiet and calm in my head also. And that's really important to understand for myself. Yeah, and especially if you recognize something in this. Wow, yeah, such a journey. And 
there's also so much that I can share in relationship with my partner, how this works, as he has an undefined solar plexus, but I will go into that in another video. And yeah, like I said, I'm not even talking about making the decisions then through my emotional authority. I'm just sharing now on how my whole journey has been with getting to know my emotions and my wave. I'm gonna leave it here for now. If you have any questions or if you want to share your experience, I'm very, very curious and let me know what kind of wave you have. And if you are defined or undefined, I really would like to have a more of a chat and if you share your experience here in the comments then other people can learn from that too don't forget to subscribe to like the video that will really help me and i would love to see you in the next time bye bye